Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In this week's episode, we're going to be covering the Hornady 110 grain A tips in 6mm Creedmoor. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of the community here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. You guys wanted it, you guys got it. This is the 110 grain A-tips by Hornady. We're going to be using them in 6mm Creedmoor today. When I posted my last A-tip video in 6.5 Creedmoor, I had several people ask me to test this in 6mm Creedmoor. And I asked you guys what powders you wanted to see. And one of the primary powders is H4350. So that's what we're going to be going over today. As we go a little further through our load development of these ATIP projectiles, we're going to be learning a little bit more. I have been weighing them as I use them. I intend to be able to give you guys the statistics on what the actual weight dispersion for the actual lot is. But right now I've only used 20 of them. And so far, honestly, we're really impressed. As you might be able to see, these 110 grain projectiles have a G1 ballistic coefficient of 0.604. The G7 is 0.304. But one of the big deals about this, if you look at the twist rate that's required, it says it's only requiring a 1 and 7.7 .7 inch twist, which just happens to be exactly what the twist rate of our Ruger Precision Rifle that we'll be testing these in today. We've done a reasonable amount of testing with 6mm Creedmoor on the channel so far. Had some pretty good results. Honestly, it's one of my favorite rifles to shoot because it's so easy to print good groups. And I don't suspect today is going to be much different. However, I will warn you, we're probably not going to show the shooting today, but we are going to go through a pressure velocity curve with H4350 to give us an idea of where we would like to start loading at. Above everything you're going to realize, at least as far as horny projectiles are concerned, these are pretty expensive. The retail price of this box is somewhere in the ballpark of $75, give or take, though you'll be able to find them for less when they're on sale. These are pretty much the premium projectile from Hornady, and they price them as such. A, if you're unaware, stands for aluminum. So these are aluminum tip projectiles. If, if you see the comparison to the 108 grain ELD that we also have here on the table, you'll notice that it has a polymer tip. Now, I'm honestly very excited about these 110 grain projectiles simply because of the 108. The 108 grain ELD shot very well, low most of our projectiles did. With a high G1 ballistic coefficient, if these are easy to load and easy to get good groups, that always makes a projectile that's expensive a little bit easier to swallow. The test we'll be running today is a 10 round velocity curve. What we're really looking for is velocity nodes. If you guys really want to find out more about it, I can put a link in the description box below with a video to the 6.5 Guys channel on the Scott Saturday load development style. I'm sure there's other names for it, but basically it's kind of a style of being able to load 10 rounds and finding a velocity node of which your rifle will perform well. Initially, what you'll intend to do is start somewhere very close to max, maybe just a little bit over, and go down in 0.2 grain increments for at least 10 rounds, and that's going to give us our starting velocity. Since we've already tested this powder in our rifle, and we know it's performing within somewhat expectation, we're not going to be 10% down today. We're honestly going to be starting at 40.2 grains. Now, finding out where max was actually where this became a little bit complicated. Hornady does have load data for this for H4350, and honestly, that's where our testing is going to be based today. They're using the same identical load data for the 108 on their website for the 110. If you're familiar with Hornady data, that probably won't shock you. In fact, as of the recording of this video, that data is still up there. So until they release the 11th edition, that's probably going to be there if you're interested in it. So download it while it's available. Hornady actually lists a maximum charge of H4350 at 41.7 grains and estimates our velocity at that at somewhere around 3,050 feet per second. I always like to have comparative data sources if possible because it's very frequently people tease that Hornady data is actually pretty low. And so going over, I have the new Sierra manual and it, obviously it doesn't have Hornady projectiles in there, but Sierra does have a 110 in case you're not familiar. It is the Sierra number 1575. It's also exactly 110 grains. However, it's slightly different because it requires a one and seven inch twist. In Sierra's data, they actually list a maximum charge of 40.9 grains and list their estimated velocity for that at about 3,010 feet per second. Since Hornady is making the projectile and the case in this particular test, we're gonna have no problem going with Hornady data and actually having no problem going slightly over that as we work up in two tenths of a grain increments, we're going to be looking for pressure. And if we saw anything that was going to make us feel unsafe, we certainly would stop. But I will spoil it for you. We don't. So going our load test in great detail today, the brass we're using today is Horny Brass from 6mm Creedmoor factory ammo that we purchased already and tested. I'm sure I'll get some questions on this, but our primer today is the CCI 250. 
If you're wondering why I'm using a Magnum primer, I've actually had really good luck with standard deviations being lower with Magnum primers in H4350, at least in 6.5 Creedmoor. So we're going to be taking that over to 6mm Creedmoor and seeing how it performs today. Our test platform is a Ruger Precision Rifle chambered in 6mm Creedmoor. This is essentially its factory configuration. Nothing really special about it. It has shot well for us, so I'm excited to see how it performs today. It does have the factory muzzle brake. The scope on our rifle is a Vortex Razor Gen 2, 4.5 to 27. In case you're not familiar with the reloading process, typically I full length size bumping the shoulder two thousandths while removing the expander ball, and I actually set the final dimension with a Sinclair neck turning mandrel die for that caliber, so it should set our neck tension at almost exactly two thousandths. There's a very short throat on our rifle, and so our cartridge overall length is going to be right at 2.810, which is exactly what Hornady's book recommends. That's getting us very close to our lands. And so basically we're going factory data today, right out of the gate. It's going to run reliably in whatever magazine came with our rifle, and if it shoots well, that's just what we're going to use. The CBTO on that overall length actually comes out to be 2.190 inches for those of you who are curious. And because life wouldn't be fun without having to buy extra little gizmos, we did buy the special seating tip from Hornady, which is part number 397139. And because we're using a Hornady tip means we have to use a Hornady factory die. This does have the micrometer adjustment added to it, which can move around from Hornady seating die to Hornady seating die. And that's what we're using to seat our projectiles today. So guys, ordinarily I'd take you out to the range, but I want to keep in mind that groups are really not what we're entirely concerned with today. What we're really looking for is the curve to find a plateau on and then shoot the rifle at those particular charge weights to see how the bullet performs with those. For today's 10 shots, we're just going to show you the overall group. In my opinion, a fairly respectable group for a 10 shot group over 100 feet per second change from top to bottom. Overall group size is 0.992 MOA as we bring up our graph 95 feet per second from the lowest charge all the way to the highest. So without further ado, we'll put our graph on the screen and we can see at 40.2 grains, we started out at 2890 feet per second. And at 42 grains, which was three tenths of a grain over Hornady's maximum, our estimated velocity would have been 30, 50 feet per second, but our actual only attained velocity was 2,985 feet per second. As far as finding max velocity, we would be a little bit disappointed that we didn't quite get close to the, our predicted velocity. However, looking at the graph, this is one of the best Scott Satterley graphs that I have ever generated here on the channel. Now, we did cheat a little bit. I know that the combination of Magnum primers and H4350 has worked well for us in 6.5 Creedmoor, and it seems that it's translated right over to 6 millimeter Creedmoor. Looking for plateaus here, you can see at, uh, at 40.8 and 41 grains, our rifle shot identical velocities at 29.16 feet per second. Gained velocity again, and at our max charges of 41.8 and 42, we were within two feet per second of each other. So pretty sure there's another velocity node right up along that max charge of 42 grains. But we didn't hit the 3,050 feet per second that we'd hope we would. I may run the pressures real quick in quick load to show what quick load thinks our actual pressure achieved was to see if we can go up anymore. We'll put our brass on the screen real quick. You guys can take a quick look as you go across from top to bottom. As we look from top to bottom, you can see really there's no significant pressure signs on our cases whatsoever. No primer cratering at all to worry about. No ejector marks or anything like that. Depending on what quick load says, we might try and go a little bit higher in another test. Or we might just decide to test on those two velocity nodes just to see how this projectile performs. When we just picked a load and shot the 153s and 6.5 Creedmoor, they shot really well, basically all into one hole, though that was only a five shot group. Overall, I'm pretty sure these are some high quality projectiles. They're certainly charging for a high quality projectile. Now, in case you guys were concerned, I should have put up our shooting conditions for today. We were shooting at 44 degrees Fahrenheit, 66% relative humidity. So our density altitude was 241 feet. To give you guys some quick statistics so far on the weights of which we've found, out of the 20 rounds we've loaded, the lowest weight for an individual projectile was 109.88 grains, all the way to our maximum weight projectile was 110.06. So pretty much a 0.2 grain extreme spread from top to bottom as far as the weights on these projectiles so far. I am going to collect all the information for the whole box as we go. I was going to include in this video, but we're going to do lots more videos on these 110s. I have two boxes of them, and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to be able to see most of them get fired here on the channel, see how they perform, give you guys an idea. We're going to do another one of these load workups with Reloader 16 because the two primary powders that you guys pick were Reloader 16 as well as H4350. 
And so we're going to be interested to see how it performs moving forward as well. I'm sure there's some of you guys that wanted to see more, but if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. You're going to see more about this on the channel. It's going to be coming. But even if you're not planning on loading these Hornady A-tip projectiles, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comment section below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn the bell notification on so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.